Hi guys, so now having understood micro and macro effects and what they are, we can now apply them to various topic areas. In this video, we're going to look at four topic areas that seem very heavy micro, but we're going to prove that, yeah, the micro effects are simple enough, but we can also get macro effects from them. Let's start by looking at market structures as one general group. Now, of course, if it comes in paper three, it's going to be linked to a certain market structure, but these micro macro effects are very good generally that apply to all of them. Let's focus on the micro effects first. So we can see the number but one, two, and three are your static efficiency. So what we can say is that in concentrated markets, we tend not to see these, like for example, monopoly, whereas in competitive markets, we do see these. So these are definitely micro effects. We can talk about how in many concentrated markets like monopoly, oligopoly, maybe even in certain contestable markets, firms will act anti-competitively using anti-competitive strategies, whether that's mergers, whether that's predatory pricing, limit pricing, flooding the market, heavy advertising, micro effect there. We can talk about the price discriminating aspect of a monopoly as well uh, in terms of a micro effect. But what about macro effects? These don't seem as obvious, right? But there are some clear macro effects. We can talk about dynamic efficiency gains, the impact on LRAS, long run growth, productivity, and all that kind of stuff there. That's very, very good. We can talk about jobs, how in competitive markets you often see job creation. Labor is a drive demand and therefore when quantity is high in a competitive market, we see more jobs created in a competitive market. Link that to unemployment, employment as a macro objective. We can talk about productive efficiency and how in uh, competitive markets we see the huge exploitation of economies of scale that boosts productive efficiency, but that will also boost LRS and link to the macro outcomes from that. We can talk about how in competitive markets, because prices are low, affordability is high, consumer surplus is high, that's good for living standards, that's good for individuals on lower incomes, right? And also good for uh, dealing with income inequality problems. You'd rather have competitive markets if those are the issues in your economy, rather than concentrated markets exploiting consumers with high prices. So definite links to macro as well. What about the topic area of a trade union? Again, it screams very micro, doesn't it? If we look at the micro effects, we know about these, the impact on the labor market, wages and employment. We know that trade unions fight for worker rights and worker protections, definitely stakeholder impacts, focusing on workers, so a micro effect. We know how trade unions actually improve outcomes in a monopsony labor market, not just increasing wages, but also increasing employment there. Definite micro effect going through the monopsony labor market. We can talk about the cost burden to firms, micro effect focusing on firms there. We can talk about dealing with wage discrimination as a micro effect as well. That's simple stuff, but also the macro effects of a trade union, how they could raise unemployment in a traditional labor market, but actually reduce unemployment if you have a lot of monopsony labor markets in your economy. Because they fight for higher wages, they also impose costs on firms that could drive up prices and inflation. That could worsen international competitiveness if you then go to trade and the current account deficit worsening, that'll be a macro effect. And also strong trade unions can actually detract FDI. Now you talk here macro effects and you see how simple that is? Brilliant, let's keep going and look at a subsidy. The micro effects of a subsidy are very clear. We know through the functioning of a market how a subsidy reduces price by reducing cost of production and therefore increases consumer surplus. We know also how it increases quantity and therefore can deal with market failures where quantity is too low. For example, when there are positive externalities. It also improves affordability. That's a different kind of micro effect if you're talking about inequities in the market. So improving affordability, improving equity for essential goods and services like education, healthcare, for example. We can talk about the impacts on producer revenue, but also if we go the other way, how it can promote inefficiency for uh, private businesses. Also, if we focus on the individual impact on the government as a stakeholder, the cost of the government. Clear micro effects, but also some macro effects. We can think of a subsidy as a protectionist measure, domestic subsidy, right? So you can talk about it protecting domestic producers, protecting domestic industry, protecting domestic workers, right? Go into uh, protectionism as an idea, make it a macro effect. We can talk about how maybe a subsidy, if used widely throughout the economy, can actually reduce costs of production for many firms and therefore shift SRAS to the right and maybe reduce cost push inflation. We can link subsidies to improving international competitiveness, maybe linked to trade, linked to the current account position. Uh, on the same lines, if we're talking about competitiveness, maybe widespread subsidies can actually attract FDI. Definitely macro effect there. But also the general impact on government finances as a whole. So if you link to the budget deficit worsening, if you link to national debt increasing, you can make it a macro effect by focusing on those key terms. 
So great, what about privatization and deregulation as competition policies? The micro effects of these policies are very simple. Remember, these are competition promoting policies. So therefore, we can go to our static efficiencies, allocative, productive, and ex-efficiency. From there, we can talk about lower prices for consumers, higher consumer surplus, higher quantity, higher quality, higher choice. We can talk about dynamic efficiency as a micro effect. So firms are now making more profit, the reinvestment of that, focus on the micro benefits there. We can talk about individual stakeholder impacts, focus on the negative stakeholder impacts. Let's take privatization and say now that firms are very profit motivated, would that mean cost cutting? For example, cost cutting with, with wages, that's not good for workers. Maybe cost cutting getting rid of workers, that's not good. Maybe cost cutting in dangerous areas like product safety, like health and safety, like environmental quality, right? And individual stakeholders that lose from that. We talk about deregulation. Where are the laws being relaxed? Is it in the labor market with hiring and firing laws? Is it with um, health and safety laws in the labor market, maternity, paternity leave, etc. So you can talk about how workers maybe uh, their welfare is harmed at work as a result of that. We can talk about market failures as well. Going back to deregulation, is um, deregulation with environmental standards, environmental laws, in which case we could worsen environmental market failures? Or more generally, if we have privatization, private firms coming in will ignore any externalities and therefore potentially worsen market failures. What about some macro effects? Well, we can link productive efficiency and dynamic efficiency to LRS and long-run growth. Productive efficiency boosts LRS, dynamic efficiency investment generally in the economy will boost LRAS. We can talk about how if markets are now more competitive, there might be more jobs being created because quantity is higher, labor is a derived demand. Or you could go as a, as a macro effect, uh, more private firms, you know, cost cutting again, would they actually sack workers and increase unemployment? So you can go either way. Focus on employment or unemployment as a macro objective and it's a macro effect. We can talk about privatization in PFIs and how uh, infrastructure can be built in the short term and that's good for competitiveness, that's good for attracting FDI, clear macro effect. And we can also talk about how if privatization is selling off of state-owned assets to the private sector, that's going to increase government revenue and that's reduce budget deficits, reduce the national debt. So you can see, guys, how all these four very clear micro topic areas have also got easy macro effects. Hopefully you've seen how simple that is. Hopefully you can follow, you've taken that in and you can do it yourself. We're going to continue doing this for more videos. Stay tuned for those. I'll see you then, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.